Okay, so um, this is just a little thing that I wanted to put together because somebody asked me the other day how um, an avalanche airbag works to bring you to the surface. Avalanche airbags are um, pretty commonplace in Europe and uh, they're becoming commonplace here um, despite their cost um, and they have a 98% flotation rate which is uh, excellent. Basically, if you don't get buried, you don't have any problems. Well, aside from impacting things, but that's with or without an airbag, you, you'll run into that. Anyway, so I kind of wanted to discuss how an avalanche airbag works. And the idea behind an avalanche airbag is not so much to float you to the top like a, like a life jacket would or an inner, an inner tube. Um, because although snow is water, it doesn't behave like liquid water when it comes to floating objects. Um, when you're talking about liquid water, um, the flotation principle is basically if your area is uh, enough for the water to buoy you up, but not enough weight to overcome that buoyancy, then you will float. Well, with snowpack, it's a granular flow, so it doesn't work like that. Basically what it does is it's a system of small particles, and each one of those, um, uh, the, the system itself is, it has a very, very complex, uh, very, very uh, computational intensive uh, flow pattern, basically a kind of scoops like this. It's kind of a, if you think of like a magnetic field or a flux line, it kind of looks like that. So as the snow kind of churns, it brings up the center and pulls around to the sides like, like a fan circulating in a room or a storm system. So to kind of illustrate how an avalanche airbag works in a granular system, uh, I turn to an old uh, Sunday school lesson. And frankly, I don't we go. I don't recall the point of the Sunday school lesson at all, but it illustrates this point I want to make perfectly. So, here's you. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the snowpack. This is avalanche. This is uh, short, short grain rice. And um, this will represent you with uh, an avalanche airbag, something with a lot of volume. So, despite the fact that uh, the battery weighs significantly more than the rice and the fact that if you dropped a battery in water it would sink despite the fact that it has a relatively large surface area. If you put the battery at the bottom and agitate the particles the battery ends up on the top. And that again is due to the granular flow pattern, the fact that the rice is going down the sides circling around the bottom and pushing up through the center. And the idea being that the more voluminous an object you are, the more likely you are to end up on the surface of a granular flow uh, uh, system. So an avalanche airbag doesn't work necessarily by floating you, and I suppose you could use it in a flotation situation, but it works more in the sense that you're a very large, very voluminous object, and as the uh, system of particles uh, circulates around you, it uh, isolates you out pulls you up to the top. If you ever look at an avalanche debris, it's just big, big chunks of avalanche debris right on top. It's the same principle. Larger chunks float to the top, or are actually pushed to the top. So anyway, that's the principle behind an avalanche airbag. And If you don't have an avalanche airbag, uh, the next best thing you can do, and this is what I do currently, is just get a very, very large bag. Uh, I've got a 42 liter, and just stuff it with very lightweight, very um, voluminous objects, like a down jacket. Um, if you've got a very light uh, down sleeping bag and you're doing a short tour, stuff that in there. Because that's not a bad idea to have uh, anyway. Basically, super lightweight, super high volume is the thing you're going for. And of course, air being very lightweight and highly voluminous. So avalanche airbags are ideal. But if you can't afford one, and frankly, they're a lot of money, then consider making you the biggest object you can on the mountain. Uh, that's, that's everything.